have a, a fantastic gentleman joining the conversation this morning. Dr. Peter Ogudoro is an education uh, researcher and leader of the Nigerian teachers community, over 400,000 members uh, in Lagos right here. Good morning, uh, Dr. Peter Ogudoro. Thank you for joining no, us. It's my pleasure. Yeah, good morning. It's my pleasure to join you. All right. A bit of a background to what's going on. The president has given the minister an ultimatum to ensure that uh, the strike, which is about six months, all ends uh, soon. We don't know how soon. President Mohamed Buhari was uh, given an order. He met with the Minister of Education at Damwa Demu and relevant members of his cabinet, where he received briefings on the current face of between the government and university unions, including ASU. Now, at the end of the meeting, he directed the Education Minister to profile a solution to the continued industrial action by lecturers and report back to him in two weeks. I mean, so it's going to take a lot of time. It doesn't mean that it would end in two weeks. The president had also instructed the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngege, as well as the Secretary of the Federation, uh, Boss Mustafa, who were also present, to be in attendance in all the meetings to speedily resolve the crisis. While ASU President Emmanuel Shodake sees the president's action as a welcome development, he's of the opinion that given such a directive is not new. He believes that government is still on serious with a lingering strike by university lecturers, stressing that it does not require such a long time or time frame to resolve the issues. He further says that it will take just two days and not two weeks to call off the strike, which is really, really interesting. Two weeks is too long, he said. Uh, the issue of negotiation has been completed by both sides and just come back to us and say, we have agreed, we will not take two, uh, two days. That will not take two days, okay? So it means that you guys have agreed. It should not take two days to come back and say we have done it. What exactly is the issue? We have this morning joining us, Dr. Peter Ogun Dore. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. It's my pleasure. Good morning. Uh, now, listening to, you know, this background, the background to this, what do you make of it? The, the, uh, the union is saying that two weeks is too long for all of this. We have had several talks. We have come to an agreement, and we don't even need two weeks for it. It might just take two days uh, for the strike to be called off. Who's to be blamed in all of this? Yeah, I think the attitude of our politicians um, should be what we have to address. Uh, they, because they train their children abroad, uh, they are not wearing the shoes, so they don't know how you know badly they can pinch you. And uh, that means that they don't see why they should be in a hurry to resolve the matter. So um, to answer your question directly, I think that the politicians are the ones who are giving us the headache. They don't seem to understand how indispensable education is, especially higher education is, to the uh, fast track of development for the country. So I'm very unhappy that this is the uh, you know, crop of people who are, who are at the helm of affairs in managing the political affairs of, of our country. We, have, we, we can't complain about the, the university lecturer. We are not paying them well, and the little we have agreed to pay them. We don't deliver in good time. We, these are people who are suffering for about five months now. They have not been earning salary. And we don't seem to be in a hurry to end it. So the, the, the answer is obvious. The, the politicians don't know what they're doing. But um, let's also look at, you know, uh, the consents of our sooner and also look at the state of the government. It's a two-way thing. The government, on the other hand, seems to be saying that there's no money especially with all this going on, uh, where you want to look at remittances to the Federation account. How consistent have we been? Uh, what's even going on? Do we really have money? Because at the end of all of this is the fact that, you know, these lecturers are asking uh, for money. Everything that is required requires money. But you also look at the consents of these lecturers, the union now. It's also valid. They are asking for uh, revitalization of universities, allowances, and what have you, uh, just to have a beautiful atmosphere uh, where education and learning can be very fantastic. How do you uh, balance this two now? Do you think that ASU has been unnecessarily dramatic and being insensitive to the plight of government? Do you also think that government is also not, uh, you know, living to high expectation? 
No, you can't. Uh, uh, ASU members are employees of, of government, and so employees uh, in any clan never have the responsibility to, to fund uh, system under which they work because they didn't set up the system. You set up the system and you employ them. So if you own the system, it's their responsibility to think of how to fund it. And I think that even if um, we succeed in getting uh, university letters back to their classrooms, we're still are going to go back to uh, this square one uh, very, very soon because the fundamental issue you have raised here, which is funding, has not been addressed in all of these negotiations. We are too much in a hurry to try to get back to classrooms and get our children, you know, uh, send them away from, from our home so that uh, they don't keep falling at things and keep feeling very, uh, you know, frustrated and depressed. But I tell you that, um, uh, indeed, the federal government doesn't seem to have the kind of money it takes to run universities at the cutting edge level. And uh, we are also wrong to have assumed that the parents of the children who study in these places are unwilling to contribute to the funding of universities in our country. Uh, it's just the fact that we don't seem to know how to go about getting parents to, to contribute you know, significantly to the funding of the system. Uh, it's the wrong model for us to keep thinking uh, that in an attempt to press students, in students and their parents, that government will continue to pay. Uh, 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 you know, bring all the money that is required to fund the laboratories and pay university lecturer salaries. It's not a sustainable model. Parents must be brought to the to the table. In all of these conversations, I haven't had that parents of these children and the children themselves were part of the conversations. And that is um, so. Uh, this ag agreement is dead on arrival. First, university lecturer get them back to class. I mean, they pay what they're owing them now. I don't have a sustainable model for funding the university system. We are about to try to let us do that. No, but um, we understand that 2% or, you know, of the revenue that's being generated is used to fund the educational system. Is, is this a case of, the, of no funds, that we don't have funds you know, to fund uh, universities? Or is it a case of no will? What exactly are we dealing with here now? Because as a strike, has been ongoing for a long time. I, as a person seated here, have experienced the strike. So you, you can imagine. It feels like it's something that would never go off. And here we are, six months, you have, uh, you know, the children sitting at home, doing nothing. What, what exactly are we dealing with? That government does not have the resources, the funds. Uh, you know, to fund our universities, or there's no will to fund, you know, the universities? No. We, we, you see, in our country, we, we, we like to assume that we are rich. Nigeria is a poor country. Our entire national budget, really, is, is uh, much smaller uh, compared to, for example, the money at Tesla, at one organization in the U.S. is making in a year now. So you are a very poor country. So you have to re re recognize that and put it on the front burner for parents to know. The idea that government owes all the responsibility to fund education 100% is the wrong idea. It, it's just societies all of us are sending our children that we want to go and you know, uh, relax and enjoy. Uh, for example, United States, United States, you know, United Kingdom, um, especially those two countries, look at them. They have the best education in the world at the moment, especially at the higher education level. And when it comes to the lower levels, we start talking about countries like Finland, Sweden, and Iceland. Go and check those countries. The average young person who is even at 100 levels in, in the United States, 8,000 pounds in a year. Translate that to Naira, you see how much it costs to have education in the UK. I've studied in the UK, I know how much it costs me to have that education. Go to the, U uh, to the US, a similar circumstance. The average child in the, in the US university, you know, He's paying his, you know, the loan he took to be able to get, get higher education several years after graduating. So why are we insisting uh, that uh, people have to get higher education for free? Yes, we can say parents are poor, but this, uh, many of these parents are also the ones who have their children in private universities in our country. So we, if we negotiate and bring parents into the equation, you will discover that we'll be able to find a model that is sustainable. The current model is not sustainable at all. No, but um, if you say that we don't have enough money, we will come back to the argument of how 
much a senator is earning in Nigeria when that's been juxtaposed with other countries. And we look at, you know, the lifestyle of our politicians and those who are in the ruling class, the fact that they live very flamboyant. You want to go as low as looking at, you know, a convoy of a local government chairman. He probably would have like, you know, uh, uh, several fleets of cars. And these cars would require you to fuel them. You have to pay the personnel. You have to pay the people who would man these cars because these cars will not drive themselves. Uh, I, let's not even begin to go to the statistics or figures. So how do we constantly say that we don't have money when we have, uh, we're spending so much? We look at how much we spend to maintain, you know, uh, the cost of running governance in Nigeria. You mentioned the budget. How much of the budget is being paid to recurrent, exp I mean, capital expenditure? We seem to pay more attention to recurrent expenditure than capital over time. So why do we say that we don't have money? Because the cost of running government is on the high. We spend so much money running the government. We see the allowances that these senators and these governors and what have you take home. But we don't have money, you know, to fund the universities. So are you saying that we should privatize our universities now? We should hand it over, you know, to the private sector. Well, unfortunately, uh, we have been disconnected. Uh, Dr. Peter Gunduru, uh, we hope that he joins us. But these are some of the issues that we're talking about. Is it really a problem of no uh, funds to fund the, uh, our institution? I am saying, <laughs> really, how much does the professor end in Nigeria? About 500,000, if not below 500,000. That's what a professor, do you know what it takes to become a professor? It requires a lot of studying, learning, you know, all sorts. And these persons seem not to have a life. And then on the other hand, you, you, you have, because that's what it is. That's why you see every other time everybody wants to become a governor. Maybe we need, need to reduce the pecs of becoming governors, uh, chairman of local government, and, you know, becoming a president, all of the allowances, and a senator. And then it might not become very attractive for people to venture into. Why don't we have a lot of persons saying they want to become lecturers and professors? Because it's not lucrative. I, you know, pass through a school system. And I can tell you what it is. It's a federal institution. People literally in 21st century sit on the floor. The school environment is nothing to write home about. I have been in a classroom or a lecture room, or, you know, a lab where I'm being told to imagine that there's a computer in front of me. It is totally embarrassing. Not to say that we have perfect countries in the world, but, you know, really, how do you explain that? They say wherever your money is is where your hat will go. Do we put our hat where? Uh, do we put our money where our hat is? Because we see where our money goes. Does it go to the educational sector? Uh, let's look at the learning environment. How many persons leave Ghana and leave other African countries to come to school in Nigeria? No. And now we hear the president giving an ultimatum: end it. Is the president leading from behind or in front? Should the president not be? You know. Can the president not even boycott the minister or even have the minister, uh, you know, the labor man, Chris Ngige, all together and ask this person to come, let's talk about this issue. How do, do we solve it? And how do you get into a table with two people and at the end of the day, you refuse, you know, to implement what you have agreed on? An agreement that says an agreement. So what exactly are we dealing with now? Is it really true that we don't have resources or we don't even care about the people? And because we have what it takes to send our children outside of the country, and nobody says it's a big deal, but hey, do we know how we enrich this country constantly when we send our children outside? Why can't we fix our own educational system and have people coming to spend the money in our country? But that's the size of our conversation. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. I am Messia Bopo. If you missed out on any part of it, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I'll see you tomorrow.